What's up guys, today I'd love to share with you a really powerful winning line for white against the Scandinavian defense. And Scandinavian defense is surprisingly popular on amateur level, it's more popular than the French defense or the Karakhan defense on the first move, and therefore you gotta know how to handle it. Now after pawn to d5, initially you just wanna take it, queen recaptures, which gives you an extra tempo for attack and development. You, they usually drop their queen back to d8, it's the most popular move because it's the simplest for black, they don't have to run around with a queen and deal with further attacks. So queen d8. Now how do you handle this most critical position of this opening? What I recommend is to move bishop to c4 first. What's the point? Well if you play knight f3 first, sometimes you gotta deal with this pin. It's certainly not the end of the world, but there is a way for you to spice it up and you'll see the point of the plan in a moment. So you first go bishop c4, now they develop naturally, and only then you play knight to f3. You may be wondering, hey Igor, but what if he goes bishop g4 right here? Many of them will, because it looks aggressive for black, and that's what black typically wants to achieve in the Scandinavian defense. But there are beautiful ways for you to refute this. One of them be knight to e5. You just ignore the pin completely, and as they capture your queen, that leads to this nice quick checkmate. Since we know that bishop g4 backfires really badly for black, sometimes they may just say, okay, I'm gonna develop my knight just as well. Then you push the pawn to d4, that actually creates the threat of pawn going forward to d5. But for now your opponent is still feeling pretty optimistic, they're gonna play bishop g4 right here, since their knight is controlling these squares, so that bishop takes f7 tactics is not an option anymore, and they think that they're creating threats, they're putting pin here, they're creating some tension against your pawn on d4, it looks somewhat unpleasant for white, a lot of players like don't know how to react, they play passively with bishop e3, but what you want to do is to be aggressive and to play forward pawn to d5. Now it forces this knight to go somewhere back to the passive position, but if black wants to keep attacking they'll play knight e5, which is the most popular move by black. They think that life's good, they're still maintaining the pin and they attack all around, but you once again sacrifice your queen. So you play knight takes e5. It's crazy how you sacrifice your queen in two of the most popular lines here. Now, bishop takes d1 is forced, otherwise black is just down material, and now you play bishop b5. All of a sudden it turns out that black has no convenient way to cover their king. If they do so with a pawn, you just take it, and you still have all the threats on the next move, you'll move this pawn forward or take on b7, and this check is deadly unpleasant. If they trade on c6, you recapture with a bishop, they still have to deal with this check. If they cover with a knight, you just start capturing everything bishop takes, and finally they have to give you their queen back, Queen takes d7, knight takes, and as we keep you know, trading off everything at the end of the line, when the dust settles, you can see that you've got an extra knight and a pawn, and since it's an endgame, your opponent does not have any attack, this should be easily winning for you. That said, we have just analyzed how you can shut down any early aggressive attempts of black. If they go bishop g4, that fails to this bishop takes f7 tactics or knight e5 in whatever order that you prefer, or if they instead go knight to c6, you play pawn to d4 and you press them with this pawn if they try to play actively again it backfires. Which means that black actually has to humble themselves and to play a more passive move such as pawn to e6 just to stop you from pushing forward. In this case certainly we're happy, we have no issues, we have more space, better activity and we just develop. In most cases they go bishop b4, which is another move in the wrong direction, nice for you. The bishop over here on b4 doesn't really do all that much, and after bishop g5, this pin is something unpleasant they, they have to handle. Then they usually follow up with one another mistake, they trade on c3, typically a bishop is a bit stronger than a knight, therefore this exchange favors you, also this solidifies your center, again everything's cool. After they castles, you then have a very clear plan of attacking his king side. You've got this great pin, and therefore, like if the queen ever moves, you can always trade and split up their pawns and then target their king. Also, knight e5 in some variations is very powerful. I'd recommend that you first play bishop d3, putting the other bishop against this pawn on h7. If you play knight e5 right away, then it's a nice move overall, but as they take on e5, you'll then have to trade queens, and ideally you don't want that because you want to attack and checkmate his king. So it's not bad for white, but it's even stronger to play bishop d3. So first you put this bishop to an active diagonal, and secondly you prepare knight e5, so that after an exchange, the d-file is closed, and he can't trade queens anymore, he'll just lose the knight. 
let me show you the variation. Let's say he goes something like b6. You go knight e5, you put pressure, your knight is really strong. If he doesn't do anything, you can support it with your pawn from f4, and that's a really like complete domination. You just shut it down, and black is completely defenseless after that. If they take here, then after they straight, notice that the knight is pinned and is attacked, and once again, black is going down. So what can they finally do? Sometimes in positions like that, they just go all out and try to say, okay, I can't tolerate this pin any longer, I'll try to go h6 and then g5. Of course, the obvious downside is that it weakens the king. It weakens it so much that you could just go back and your position is still winning. But knight takes g5 is the most aggressive way to take advantage of this, because even though you sacrifice a knight for two pawns, now the king is exposed completely, plus they still couldn't get rid of this pin. And then it's usually easily winning for white. I'll just show you an example variation, you don't have to memorize it. I mean, it's pretty clear that the king is open, you just want to bring over some of your heavy pieces there, whether it be queen or maybe the rook, you can make this rook lift over there, and all in all, black just can't really do anything. Say they go king g7, you can play queen f3, putting more pressure here, they still don't know how to handle this pin. Say they go rook to h8, and you bring your rook over, so you want to bring it to e4, g4, something like this. This knight is always pinned, so black can't really move it. The most played move by black in this position is rook h5, trying to get rid of this bishop, but it's just a blunder, because after a bishop takes f6, this is a check to the king, and then you grab the rook and continue your attack, and black is just completely destroyed. Now that covers the most important and most common move, queen to d8. Now you know how to crush it badly against all the black's aggressive attempts. You may be wondering what to do if black plays queen to a5. That's another variation. I've got another video about that with some more traps against it. You may wish to click this link and check it out. That's also quite an interesting video. Also, if you wish to improve your positional understanding as well as your chess level overall, you may wish to check out this free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you soon.